The purpose of this video is to make the discussion around optimization easier to understand. Basically less shit is more optimized. I'm going to demonstrate this and test two different models with Godot 4. One model will be optimized and utilize regular resources for a modern game. The other will be incredibly dense with too many materials and far too many births. We will examine the models now, feel free to skip to the test which is later in the video. The test itself is a simple first person shooter where our models will chase the player, I will display all the scene performance data on the HUD, we will continually spawn the models until things get goofy and our FPS drops. Let's take a look now at our models. Both models are from the same Mixamo mesh and skeleton. We have added animations in the same way to both armatures. The first model has around 6,000 vertices and is unaltered from Mixamo. There are two textures, one acting as a diffuse and the other as a normal. This optimized enemy may not be peak efficiency, but we will be using it as a standard test unit to spawn. The theory is that we should be able to spawn significantly more of this model than the unoptimized one. Both models will be operating off identical GD scripts with the same node set up. The only real difference is the density of models in terms of data. After exporting both models from Blender to OBJ, we can see the size difference in the models and their materials. We were able to maximize the chunk of this model by using the subdivision surface modifier within Blender. Another technique we utilized was stuffing its gluttonous maw with premium grade goy slop straight from the heartland. Both models are equipped with seven animations, just the necessary ones for them to function in our little test. Looking at the models side by side, we illustrate how a model with less geometry and textures can still look much better than its denser counterpart. While the metrics in Blender and Godot don't necessarily agree on the number of triangles to the mesh, both programs agree that one model has much more geometry to render. We will see what this effect has on the performance of the Godot 4 engine. So now we have the scenes to compare in Godot 4. Both scenes are identical with only naming differences between them. The script is identical as well, except for those aforementioned naming differences. We have a simple world environment and we are using a navigation region on that world and a navigation agent 3D node on our enemy units. We will have enemies pathfinding with and without obstacles. As far as computer specs, I have an Intel i9 processor with an Asus motherboard and an Acerix RX 580AG read for my system as an AMD Radeon RX 580-2048SP. I have 16GB of DDR4 RAM available. Here are the variables that we will be tracking and a brief explanation of what they are in the engine. Enemy amount is just the amount of enemies that we have spawned. FPS is our frames per second. We're going for 60 frames per second so anything less than that is basically lagging. Texture memory is essentially the amount of memory we are using, storing textures in our active scene. Buffer memory is the amount of render buffer used. Less is better here, essentially it is a number that shows you how hard Godot has to work to get that scene rendered. Object count is Godot's interpretation of how many objects are in the scene. It gives us an understanding of how many things are in the game world. Objects in frame, these are the objects that are in the frame of our camera and therefore being rendered in the game. We are getting these measurements mainly by using Godot Performance Singleton. As demonstrated here, we are updating them every frame directly on our player's HUD. I wanted to see if I could understand how much a single unit would cost in resource utilization within Godot. To test this, I measured the metrics before and after I instanced an enemy into the scene. I then subtracted the values to find the cost of the enemy on our performance. The per amount of units are the amount of resources we would use if we instanced that amount of enemies in the game. The de-optimized model definitely takes more resources to render. We can see if we rendered 1000 of both models, the optimized model would utilize about half a gigabyte, whereas the de-optimized model would need almost 3 gigs. We performed this test again using the Windows Resource Monitor to attempt to get another measure. The top value is the value before the enemy is instanced into the scene, while the bottom is the numbers after the enemy was spawned. To dumb this down to a useful degree, we can think of the working set as the amount of data the application is using. The commit is the allowance the program has of memory usage on that computer. They grow in tandem as the need arises. However, if the working set is getting close to the commit, then you may run into issues of not having enough RAM memory available. 
This will cause your game to become unplayable and most likely crash. The MBs in use is the amount of memory your system has available for applications. We can see that 16 megabytes was used when we spawned the enemy. We can view the optimized model. We can see the value only rises by 3 megabytes. The working set, however, increases only slightly based on models, as seen in the chart. The first tests I ran, I just spawned a bunch of enemies to follow me. I did this for optimized and de-optimized models to see what amount of mobs would cost us our frame rate. In both tests, my frame rate tanked at around 50 units spawned and following, following being the key term. In these tests, we could have had more models on the screen, however pathfinding was slowing us down. Pathfinding for over 50 units proved too taxing an approach for what I was doing. While this is useful information, it's not what I wanted to test. I wanted to see how many enemies we could get on screen before we started losing frames. So I slightly altered the programming of the enemies to follow me for a random amount of time and then stop, returning themselves to the idle animation. This time is between 3 and 10 seconds. This way I can spawn the units quickly until we get some frame rate drops from the engine and it isn't pathfinding for all the units. To clarify, once the enemies stop, their pathfinding process no longer runs in the code. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and give it the test now. The enemies are going to just run at us, so um, run at us and then stop. We're going to start with the optimized. Actually, we'll start with the de-optimized and we're going to do, let's do, uh, I guess we can do 50 at a time. So we'll spawn them. You can see they run. And then randomly they should all stop within 3 to 10 seconds. So we're seeing that happen here. And uh, yeah, you can see we still got 60 frames. We're going to open that. And let my cat in. We'll come right back. And uh, yeah, 52 frames. But I think that's only because there's so many pathfinding. And they got so many obstacles. Once they all idle, we should return back to... Oh, wow. So at 150, with no pathfinding, we're at 50. And the thing is, I'm sure if I turn around, yeah, we'll get back up to 60 FPS. So, uh, basically, without tanking the game, we can have about 150 of our de-optimized model on the screen. Uh, spawn a few more and see what happens. So, to recap on that test, we are calling it about 150 de-optimized mobs can be spawned without any significant slowdown. Past that, we see a drop of a few frames. When the amount of enemies surpasses 200, we get a large drop. 150 is the number to beat for our optimized model. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Alright, now it's time to do the optimized model and see how many we can get on screen. So we're going to do the same thing, 50 at a time, uh, spawn them more. Alright, let's go ahead and spawn the next 50 of them. Sure are uh, coming at us. So yeah, at 150, I think the other game, um, the other model was having issues, but we seem to be rocking and rolling. Uh, maybe a little bit of slowdown right there, but no, I think we're still holding steady. Oh no, maybe a small, small amount of slowdown. Okay, so now there's no pathfinding going on. Uh, let's back up and get everybody in frame. Still got about 60, that's pretty good. Um, 
we do drop down when those 50s start pathfinding now, but I mean, that's understandable because they have so many obstacles to run around now. So I'm sure once they all stop, it'll go back up. 53, 54, 250, we'll hit up another 50. Can't even see where they're coming from. So at this point, the frame rate did not recover, but I feel comfortable saying around 250 is when we started seeing the slowdown appear in our optimized model. Around 100 more units could be created with our optimized model as opposed to our de-optimized one. For the rest of the video, I'll play the remaining test where I just create tons of enemies to see what happens. Thank you for watching this part. There will be another following video where we optimize the model further. This video is just to establish some baselines. I plan to do an optimization series with this setup. If you have anything you want tested specifically, please comment below. Uh, I am the Average Godot Enjoyer, and uh, have a good day.